strength and your help, oh God. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank the Lord. I am a product of the divine mercy of God. Grace extended and the manifestation of a powerful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I reflected a lot this morning on my life and my father and before I say this I want you to understand my father was a good man in the sense that he was family oriented that he was strong character And he was very instructive. And he insisted on certain things. My father was a man that demanded respect. But my dad never taught me to pray. My dad was a Sinner man. My dad's dad died while I was very young and never had an opportunity to teach me to pray. My mother's dad was a moonshiner, a sinner man. He never taught me to pray. And if it had not been for men in the local church that my grandmother took me to, it showed me what it was to be a Christian man. I wouldn't be here today. So I want to say I love my dad. Thank God he made things right before he left this world with God. If he was alive today, I'd call him and tell him just how much I love him. But you see, he and I had conversations to where I talked to him about God rather than him talking to me about God. But this morning, before I get started, he's gone on to be with the Lord. But I want to say thank God for people and men like Lehman May. Who took time out of his schedule on Sunday morning to drive an old station wagon down an old dirt road that was nine-tenths of a mile long gather up a bunch of children and my grandmother and carry us to church and talk to me about Jesus all the way there and talk to me about Jesus all the way home. Lehman May left this world several years back crossing the road, just walking across the road to the mailbox because his eyes had gotten so dim he couldn't see and was hit by a dump truck and went on to be with Jesus. But there's a reward up in heaven for Lehman May. Because every soul that's been saved from the ministry that God called me into, a portion of that's been credited to Lehman May. So what I'm saying You don't have to be a father of a person to be a real father to people.
There's been many times in my prayer that I've said, thank you, God, for Lehman May. You know, Lehman May wanted to take money out of his own pocket to send me to youth camp so I'd have an experience with God. Thank God for women. My dad's sharecropping. My mother didn't go to church. She did the very best she could trying to fight with my dad about his drinking and did her best trying to keep her children safe. Thank God for Christine String that stopped by one Saturday afternoon and said, would it be okay if I come by and pick up your four children and care of them? to the local Pentecostal Holiness Church right down the road. Caring people. What's happened to our world? Do we care? We should. Though my mother read to me Bible stories at home, my mother had no real deep spiritual experience with God until I was 14 years old. I'd been attending church for years. And at 14 years old, my mother got up and walked down the aisle and gave her heart and her life to Jesus Christ and joined the church of God with me on that Sunday morning. Forever changed her life. But thank God today for people like Betty Barbro. When I was six years old, I said, if you want to know Jesus in a Sunday school class. See, I think sometimes we underestimate what goes on in our Sunday school classes. We underestimate what goes on in our children's ministries. She said, now I'm going to teach you how to pray. And I knelt down and bowed my head. And I said, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and my life and be Lord of my life. Those people have mothered and fathered me all through my Christian experience. Now, most every one of these people have gone on to be with the Lord. They're on the other side over there. And I'm not saying this to minimize the impact that my mother and my father had on me because it was great. And I wish I had them with me today to tell them how much I love them. But what I wanted to say to you this morning is that Father's Day is a whole lot more than just having fathered a child. It's about mentoring. It's about sharing. It's about pouring your life into someone. It is about helping them grow and mature and understand who God is. If we paid attention to our Sunday school lesson this morning, it's really about the relationship with a Heavenly Father that is so important. And the scripture, as it relates to us, it's all about developing that relationship that it grows. I'd like to say thank God for the fathers who have mentored their children and have stood firm in teaching them about God. You're truly a blessed generation if your father taught you about God.
and if your mother taught you about God. Today I want to talk to you for a few minutes about fathers and children. Luke 1, 13 through 17. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. One of the greatest sins of God's people in the Old Testament had been the failure of fathers to love their sons and daughters enough to teach them the ways and the commandments of God. I never felt like when I understood my father that he didn't love me. When I didn't understand him, I questioned whether he really did. But as long as I understood him, I never questioned whether he loved me. But he never taught me to pray. He never encouraged me to seek God. So I can understand what was going on with Israel beforehand. I can understand and identify with the situation of Israel where the fathers failed to teach their children to love them enough to show them the ways of God as God desired. It didn't mean they didn't love their children. It's setting proper priorities. And this is where I think that we have to understand that as fathers of this day and this generation, you have a tremendous responsibility where your children are concerned to love them enough to teach them. I've heard this repeatedly for many years that people have said to me, I will let my children go to church when they are old enough to make the decision." And you started them off on the wrong foot. Because you should have given them an understanding. And we all have failed at times. But we should give them an opportunity to experience who Jesus really is. Because only then can it make a difference in our life for eternity. Let me just explain to you. My dad was more concerned about me being a hard-working man. That me being really conscious, conscientious of the family's needs. Being a strong character person that stood firm as a man. My dad taught me how to be a man. But he didn't teach me about God. Others were left the chore of teaching me about God. And so this question I think we need to ask ourselves. Are we really teaching our children about God? Because this is where Israel was concerned. Now the story that I relate to you here is whenever John the Baptist, the announcement of his birth, and what God was saying to Zechariah here about the birth of his son John, what we know as John the Baptist being a great man. With the coming of John, the gospel of Christ, the heart of the fathers will be turned back to their children, and the fathers will love their children and instruct them in the ways of God. 
all God really wants is for us to teach our children about Him. See, one of the things that I realize where I'm concerned as a father is my job is not to make my children live right. My job is to teach them about God and introduce them to the Lord Jesus Christ and let God take over where the, everything else is concerned and God help them to discipline their lives where they need to be in Christ. When we do that, then we are left with the promises of God that God will do great things. This turning the fathers to the children. This is a clear statement that one of the foremost goals of the gospel is to reestablish God's will for the family. It is to correct the relationship between the father and the children. And I have to say that in the generation where we're living, that things have gotten all distorted again. And it's important that we have a, such a relationship to where we have turned our hearts to God and realize that this is an opportunity to pour into our children and let God do some amazing things. I know somebody's probably thinking, well, Brother Boatwright, why don't you just preach something exciting about being a father? Because that's not what God told me to do. God says the days are short and the hours are coming that we're going to stand before a just and a holy God. And therefore that God is really concerned about us instructing our children in the ways of God. And there's no greater place for that to be than right there in the home. In the home. Okay. And those are important things is there. If the church fails to become what God wants us to be, one factor is that the father's hearts will be as they were then. They will forsake their children by failing to love them and spend time with them and to teach them diligently God's words and righteous standards. And I want to tell you that we're in a culture today that people are so involved with things of pleasure and desires for themselves, many times the children are disregarded. TV's become a babysitter. Okay. Give them some money and let them go do something else and give me a break. You know, I have to say this. My, my parents rarely ever let me go stay anywhere except my grandmother's. And occasionally go stay with one of my cousins. I remember when I was in school, I had one friend in school that my mother and my dad let me stay one night at their home. When I was in school. One night. Because they were more concerned about me being with the family and being taught from the family. And those were critical times there. You see, God has righteous standards. And God wants to do great things in us. There's some important things that relate to fathers and children. Teaching children faithfulness to God's ways is critical to them. Critical to them. Could, could I tell you some things that my wife and I worked on to help our children that a lot of times people don't even think about. And that's how to take a little bit of money that they have worked for and to give God his share. Give God his share. Because it's teaching them to respect God. God's word, God's ways, God's actions, God's house. You know, it's, it's important that, you know, I mean, that we teach our children not to take a knife and carve their initials in the back of a pew. Oh, God, did I really say that? I 
I can't tell you how many pews that I've been given responsibility to try to sand and fix and where somebody put their initials that they were here. You know what I never really found though? I never found anybody that carved their initials in the altar and said I was here. It's about teaching them certain things that we need to do about respecting and honoring God. Loving and correcting children. Now, some people have this idea. Oh, if, if I take the rod to my children, they won't love me. You got it all wrong. Correct a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he won't depart from it. Now, my dad had the correcting part down right. Yeah. Now, he could do that. And I guarantee you I knew what his law meant. And says, Danielle, I don't hold you responsible for those things that Rita had wrote down there that I said. But I was sitting there saying, yeah, you know, most of those I probably have said. Yeah. Loving and correcting your children. I mean, I catch myself doing it with my grandkids. Yeah. You know, I, I know that little old Maddie Ray is the sweetest little old thing. But I still had to pop her here the other week. Rita said it wasn't much of a pop. But oh, she realized what it was. But she was in a few minutes back in my lap loving me. You see, if you, if you love them enough to correct them, They'll love you because they understand the boundaries of your love. And that's what God's Word is declaring to us. Fathers are to pray for their children. Now, I have to say, I, I, I don't know as I ever heard my dad pray for his children. And I have heard my mother. But I was a teenager at that particular time. And I heard my mother praying, God, don't let my children die and go to hell. Don't let my children get too far away from you. Don't let my, I heard my mother praying. But that was older when I heard her praying those things. But I, I never heard my dad praying for me. I never heard him pray for my sisters, my sister and my brothers. I never heard him pray those prayers. It was later in life that he began to pray. But it's important to God that we teach our children to pray. It's an important thing that in our relationship with God that we develop. And so as a Christian father, teach your children. Teach them to love. Teach them to care. Teach them to pray and to have a relationship with God. That is so crucial to every single one of us that we teach them to have a proper relationship with God. Jesus' final prayer for his disciples in John 17 shows us our Lord's deepest desire and longing for his followers both then and now. That what we do is we get in a right relationship with God. You say, well, Brother Bo Ryan, aren't you kind of preaching kind of hard? Well, I just want us to understand who God is. God loves every one of us. But we, if we honor our children and we love our children, let's teach them about God. Teach them. If, if, you know, my father taught me an awful lot about a lot of things, but he didn't teach me about God. Wouldn't it have been wonderful if he had taught me about God also, along with all the other things he taught me? It wouldn't have took very much for him to be able to do that, and that would have been a tremendous blessing. 
In prayer for those under his care, Jesus, when he was praying there, his greatest concern would be that they may know him and his word intimately. What we as parents should do is to want our children to know about God because if we keep them in a right relationship with God, we won't have to worry about them. We need to pray for them and love them and direct them in a relationship with God. We need to teach them that God will keep them from the world, that God will hold them, that God will keep them from falling away and slipping away or going into these backslidden conditions to where they are way away from God, that God will keep them from Satan, he'll keep them from evil, he will keep them in the presence of the Lord, he'll keep them from false teaching. How can God keep them from false teaching if they don't know what the truth is? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. By teaching them about God, you teach them to possess joy inwardly. Yeah. Uh, I don't want this to sound too awful bad, but when I was a young child growing up, I didn't have many days of joy. I really didn't. I knew what it was to have plenty of food to eat, clean clothes to wear, and I knew what it was to do my work and my chores. But I didn't really know much about joy because there was a lot of negative things that happened in my world. I mean, when you come home from school, and there's a sheriff's vehicle sitting in your yard, and they're there to arrest your dad. Yeah. When your dad came home and he's so drunk, and your mother says something to him, the next thing you do know he has hit her and laid her across the table with a knife to her throat. Not much joy, is there? for a child that is five and six years old. You say, why are you saying all this, Pastor? Because I want us to understand how important it is to teach about God. I want us to understand just how important it is that we train our children about God, that we help them to understand that God is a loving, a passionate, a caring Savior. Because there wasn't much joy for us then. There was a time when my dad, due due to the fact that his baby sister was in very serious condition out in Texas, Brenham, Texas, they had her in an iron lung there. She had developed polio, and and he had received a letter because we didn't have phones, a letter that if you ever want to see her alive, he needed to come. My dad left the job and left the family, and he went out there, and he stayed for months and months in Texas. Could I tell you for the first time in my life I knew what it was to come home with joy? Yeah. You say, Brother Boatwright, are you speaking bad of your father? No, I'm telling you, my dad, I love my dad. I wish I had him here to tell him I love him. But I told him a long time back that God was important to me. I told him a long time back that I was thankful for those who mentored me in God. never forget, I was on my way to school, on the bus, going to that little Perdido High School out there, the Perdido Junior High School. Only went to the ninth grade. I looked out the window and I saw what I thought was my dad walking on the road going down toward the little town of Perdido. The bus stop stopped there at 31. He had walked from 31 there and he was headed home. Could I tell you that there were butterflies in my stomach all day long because I knew when I got home he was going to be there? What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying teach our children about God, to love God. Show them who God is. Show them that God is real and that God is a caring God. 
the day my dad stopped drinking, our lives started changing. The day that my dad chose a different way of living, our lives started changing and I started again understanding what it was to have some joyful things within my life. Thank God for changing him during some critical times within our life and begin to help us in a different way. That's what the scripture is outlining to us. Let us teach our children to honor the Lord that they may have holy thoughts and deeds and they may be men and women of character and that they can stand up. Did you know I grew up early on thinking that men that went to church, that church was really for women and weak men? Yeah, And then when I got saved, I realized the strongest men I know are men of character who serve the living God. Those are the strongest men I know. Boy, i got to hurry. They may be in such a relationship with God that they can lead others. They can lead others. Lead others. I don't want this to sound the wrong way, but I, I know that all of us go through experiences. And when our children get in trouble, one of the first things we want to do is think they got in with the wrong crowd. Somebody's child had to be the leader in that crowd. Y'all with me? Everybody hear me? It's it's. And, and, and I've said this for years in my life. The bad things that I did in my life was not because I was led down the wrong path. Because I have to say I was doing the leading. And I'm ashamed to say that I probably led a lot of people into sin. But I've been dedicating the rest of my life trying to lead people out of sin. Because of who Jesus is and what he means to me. And what he means to my life. He is a precious heavenly father. So let me just get down to the heart of what I'll share and I'll close. Children are to obey their parents. Children are to obey their parents. Let me just read a a few verses in Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. Children, obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. How many of y'all would love to have a long life? Come on, raise your hand if you want to have a long life. Yeah. Now, you know, Rita was talking about some of the things that I probably used to say. You know, I've heard her say this, look, I brought you in this world, and I can take you out of this world. Now, that's one of her sayings. Any of you mothers ever said that? Yeah. You know, trying to make a point there. The Bible said, obey your parents and you live a long life there. And that's what they were looking at. Now, normally, you know, children of believers were to remain under the guidance of their parents until they started their own families. That's the way it was in the Old Testament there. And so uh, it just meant that you cared. Now, you know... uh, Joey was, how was Joey when he got married, y'all? 22 years old? You know, uh, I gave him a curfew until he was pretty old. At least I told myself I did. But the fact is, is that uh, he didn't just go when he wanted to go and do what he wanted to do. What he did was is, He'd say, Dad, I'm going to go over to such and such place or I'm going to be at such and such place. And, and uh, I said, well, if you're going to be later than that, give me a call. And he said, I will. You know, not because he wasn't old enough to be responsible, but courtesy to your parents' request. You understand what I'm saying? Courtesy to your parents' request. Children, obey your parents. Now, you may say, well, when I get to be an adult, I'm going to do things my way and my parents aren't going to have anything to say about it. Well, then you may have to face God with that. Because the fact is that the Bible said that even though you may not do everything that they tell you, that you need to be courteous 
loving and concerned to take their advice and deal with it. Okay? Now, what he means by that is your parents love you. They're not going to kind of steer you wrong. We don't know everything. Well, while I'm there, let me just tell you this. If we just tell our parents the truth about everything, we probably get the right advice every time. But when we only get part of the truth, now I know don't raise your hand, but nobody here is guilty, I know, of ever telling your parents just partial truths. Isn't that right? And I heard some snickering and I saw some smiles. So some of y'all probably been telling or did tell your parents just partial truths. Well, see, those are the things that we're taught throughout the Scripture. Small children must be taught to obey God. Now, I think one of our children, I won't call any names, actually stated that they kind of got used to eating soap, washing their mouth out with soap. It didn't taste too bad after a while. I didn't call any names. Y'all just kind of... Take that on yourself, you know, to figure that out. You know, wouldn't it be wonderful that you say, okay. Now, I know how we deal with them today. We we take the cell phones away from them. Well, what about making them go read a whole chapter in the Bible and come back and tell you what was in it? Every night for a week, no TV, but you read me a chapter in the Bible and you come tell me what you read. Mm -hmm. Those important things there, teaching children. So here I'm coming to a close. Musicians, get ready. Children who honor their parents will be blessed by God here on earth and in eternity. There's a promise that comes along with that. So there's a twofold thing that's important. One is fathers... Mothers, teach your children. Children, obey your parents. Now, how many of you parents would love it if your children always obeyed you? (laughs) Yeah. So, in conclusion, children obey their parents in an inward affectionate regard. Their obedience should flow from love, gratitude, and esteem. I have to say this. I want you to understand it. Until the day my dad died, I respected my dad. If my dad said anything to me, I said, yes, sir, no, sir. I said to my mother, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. One time, and you got to remember, my dad was five foot seven. Okay. There was one time my dad was about to get into it with one of his cousins, and I stood up between them. I took my hands, and I pushed the two of them apart. I put my back to my dad, and I took dad's cousin outside in the yard, put him in his vehicle, got him on the road. I walked back in the house, and my dad walks up to me, and me looking down at him as he poked me in the chest very hard and said, Don't you ever do that again. And I said, Dad, I was just trying to avoid a scene and a difficult situation. This is what he said. He said, yes, I understand. I don't care about you putting him on the road. He said, but you put your hand on me. Don't ever do it again. And you know what I said to him? Yes, sir. Because it was his right to insist that I'd never put my hand at him in a forceful manner. And he took it that way. And I said, I apologize and I'll never do it again. Did you know my dad lived to be nearly 92 years old? And at that age, if he said anything to me, I said, yes, sir, and no, sir, and I respected him. Those are important things that is there in our living and in what we do. We should do it because we love them. 
Children, obey your parents not, not because you think you got to. Do it because you care about them. Do it because you honor them. Do it because you respect them. Because you have esteem for them. Children too are to honor their parents by external tokens of respect. Now, how much, how much did you say, Danielle, that was spent on Father's Day? Fifteen billion. Well, my children didn't spend that much on me, but they did spend some on me. And she, you were right, Danielle. If I don't get anything but just a card, that's just to know my children respect me and love me. That's all I want. That's all I want. And thank God for the gifts they gave. I mean, because I'll use them. But those are not what I'm looking for. It is the care there. So children, the, the external tokens of respect, just simply a hug a nod, a care. It's very important. Children are not to obey the express commands of parents while under their authority, but to receive with dissent and humble regard the instructions, counsel, and reproofs that as they communicate. The greatest thing is what I'm trying to say is children need to understand their parents love them and that they're just communicating out of love. Children are to remember if there's occasion to remember the favors that they have received from their parents. You say, what kind of favors, Brother Boatwright? Time that you swatted them across a hand so that they knew not to put their hand to something they shouldn't. Favors when you picked them up when they were crying and hurt, upset. You know, my children have never been too big to hop in my lap. My children never get too old for me to tell them I love them, to embrace them. And I'm closing. Growing up as a child and as a man, my dad didn't hug me and embrace me. When I walked up to my dad, he reached out his hand to shake my hand with a very firm handshake of a man. When I reach out to take my son, I put my arms around him and embrace him with love because I want him to know that I love him, that I love him. How important it is it? that we know God loves us and that we love our children. Stand with me, Father. Your word is great, it's powerful, it's holy, it's rich.